Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is James and in this video I want to talk a little bit more about the military in the Walking Dead universe. In my last video, I didn't talk about Fear the Walking Dead a whole bunch. I did talk about Operation Cobalt. We learned a lot about that in Fear the Walking Dead. Talked a little bit about the outbreak, the initial outbreak, them setting up quarantines, uh, safe zones, things like that. But there's several things that happened in Fear the Walking Dead I didn't talk about. I want to kind of mention in this video, and that's the nuclear submarine and a Padre and some little details. So this is a breakdown of the military's involvement in the series from its beginning to the later seasons. So the early seasons, season one, the military's presence is heavily felt early in Fear of the Walking Dead. As the outbreak escalates, the National Guard establishes quarantine zones in Los Angeles to control the situation. They secure safe zones such as the one surrounding Madison's family and impose martial law to prevent the spread of infection. They were still trying to figure it out, so it seemed. Operation Cobalt was a crucial military operation revealed in the first season. The National Guard's mission is not just to contain the infected, but to eliminate any remaining survivors outside the safe zones. Operation Cobalt's kind of when they lost control and the military planned to bomb major cities, including L.A., to wipe out all life, infected or not, in an attempt to stop the spread of the virus. The National Guard soldiers are shown to be under immense stress and sometimes resort to violence or desertion due to the overwhelming nature of the apocalypse. Seasons 2 and 3, the military presence diminishes after the events of Operation Cobalt. However, military remnants play a significant role in shaping the post-apocalyptic world. In these seasons, the main group encounters various groups who were former military personnel or had interacted with the military's early efforts to contain the outbreak. So then the mid-seasons, four through six, we get a big thing that happened, the nuclear submarine and Teddy's cult. Season six, one of the most significant developments involving military remnants is the introduction of the USS Pennsylvania, a nuclear submarine. Teddy Maddox, a doomsday cult leader, and his group managed to take control of this military asset. The submarine is found off the coast and houses dozens of nuclear warheads. Teddy's plan is to launch these warheads to cleanse the earth and remake it in his vision. This poses an existential threat to the survivors in the series. So the conflict with the sub, as the season progresses, Morgan, Strand, and the other survivors scramble to stop Teddy's cult from launching the missiles, but despite their best efforts, they fail to prevent some of the warheads from detonating the resulting nuclear fallout devastates large portions of Texas, transforming it into an even more dangerous environment where radiation and ash clouds are constant threats. As we go into the later seasons, seasons 7 and 8, this mysterious uh, place, group, community, Padre, comes into focus and we get to see what it's all about um, and its military legacy, you could say. Season 7, the fallout from the warheads defines much of that season Survivors must contend not only with walkers, but also with the, of course, irradiated landscape. While military forces are less visible, the legacy of the military's impact, such as the nuclear catastrophe, is felt everywhere. We get that little bit with the bunker. We get, you know, we see a little bit of the government side anyway. And the senator, I think he was, that had the book about Padre where we first learned about it. So it was cool to see that some part of the government, or at least one person of that, was put into a bunker and was safe and there's a bunker you know there could be other bunkers many other bunkers some big bunkers some deep bunkers some really high up with military and government people type of bunkers we just don't know a lot of information but padre is introduced as a mysterious almost mythical place in the last few seasons of fear the walking dead it is believed to be a safe haven and much of the cast searches for it in hope of finding refuge from the brutal conditions of the nuclear apocalypse Initially, little is known about Padre, except that it is associated with a military-like precision in its operations. So the military connection to Padre, as the season progresses, we figure it out, it's revealed that Padre is a highly organized operation that mirrors military efficiency and hierarchy. Padre functions like a militarized zone with strict control over resources and the people who live there. The leaders of Padre operate from a position of strength. Padre has access to pre-apocalypse military assets, further emphasizing its connection to the armed forces. And we learn all of that as the seasons play out that, yeah, it was a stockpile of stuff and labeled for different parts of the country, the desert 
areas had more stuff you would need to survive in desert areas. Um, rural areas and cities, there were all these um, containers marked with different things, you know, to go out to the different parts of the country to help rebuild, help supply, help restock in case of a big disaster like this. And boom, the leaders died, the kids took over, and uh, we know the story from there if you happen to watch Fear. But anyway, we know that there was not any individual freedom there, really. Uh, there was, it was more of a collective survival. It was an oppressive regime, really, and a military dictatorship. And one other little detail, if you go off into the webisode, Dead in the Water, it talks more about the USS Pennsylvania. And we learn a little bit about how the military breaks down. And some of that's through radio calls. You know, they're talking back and forth, like, what are we going to do? What are, what can we do? And what should we do? And, you know, they're talking among themselves. And they get an order to send a missile to Chicago in that webisode. And they're going to, but then, you know, someone stops them and it's like, we can't do this, you know? Um, but as much as we do know, no nuclear assets were launched and detonated during Operation Cobalt, just napalm and bombs and stuff like that, the shooting of civilians. But that's just a little bit more info just to add in the submarine and some stuff, details, little details and stuff that happened of course, we can definitely flesh this stuff out much more down in the comments. Let me know what you think about it. This is James in Nashville. As always, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe for more dead stuff.